Chemical Symbols and the Periodic Table by kscience.com An element is a substance made of one type of atom. Common elements that the majority of people know are carbon, nitrogen, oxygen and chlorine. These are the names of these elements in English. But what about Spanish? In Spanish, they're called carbon, nitrogeno, oxygen, and chloro. What about in Danish? Well, in Danish, these elements are called coolstuff, nitrogen, il, and chlor. The reason I'm telling you this is there are thousands of languages spoken around the world. This means there are thousands of ways scientists can use a word for an element. This poses major problems for communicating with each other. Therefore, there needs to be an internationally recognised way in which scientists can communicate with each other. And this is done through symbols, which can all be found in the periodic table. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. The periodic table contains all of the naturally and man made elements that we know about. Chemical symbols represent atoms, and these chemical symbols are the same in any country you go to. When writing chemical symbols, it's really important to remember this rule. The first letter is always a capital letter, and if there is a second letter, it is always lowercase. For example, sodium is written as capital N, lowercase a. Neon is written as capital N, lowercase e. Iron is written as capital F and lowercase e. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Make sure you make it obvious that the first letter is capital and the second letter is lowercase, as many students forget this important rule. Many students will write both letters as capital letters and this is wrong. Here I'm highlighting how the periodic table can be divided into groups. A vertical column is a group. And there are eight groups in the periodic table. Group one, group two, group three, group four, group five, group six, group seven, and finally, group zero. So to summarize, groups are vertical columns in the periodic table. And there are eight groups, one to seven, and then zero. And then there's something called a period. A period is a horizontal row. Helium is in the first period, as shown here. The second period is just below, and it starts at lithium, going right across to neon. And then below this is the next period, and below that is the next period, and it keeps on going until you get to the bottom of the periodic table. So a period is a horizontal row. Helium is the only element in period 1, below this is period 2, below this is then period 3, and below this is period 4, and it continues. Remember, a period is the horizontal row, and the group is the vertical column. Here I'm drawing the stepped line, which divides the periodic table into nonmetals on the right and metals on the left. Periodic tables do not normally show this stepped line, so you have to know the location of it, so you can easily identify that non-metals are to the right 
and metals are to the left. So all of these elements to the right of this stepped line are non-metals. And all of these elements to the left of this stepped line are metals. And hydrogen doesn't actually belong to a group, but you need to know hydrogen is a non-metal. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. If stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. And don't forget to visit kscience.com for more videos, worksheets and quizzes at kscience.com and don't forget to like and subscribe.